and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that minute week Ooh. break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and that is Pedro. Hello. Together with you live. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Is it another great day for Linux? Yes, it is. Yes. Middle of the Happy week. Happy Linux Wednesday. <laughs> supposed to be at work, watching this, maybe, I don't know. What's everyone up to, man? Pedro, you didn't write anything, so you go first. <laughs> okay. Well, um, yesterday there was more Dark Souls, and I finally tracked down a significant, significant issue that was uh, minuscule. But yeah, <laughs> wait, wait, my wait, life hang on, is... <laughs> hang on. I, I, I don't think I heard you correctly. A, a significant issue that was minuscule. Yes. Mm. Namely, uh, randomly, there would be some sort of hiccup on my system and if i was playing a video on youtube that would be like less than a tenth of a second audio delay where the same sound would just repeat for like teeny tiny little amount but i started to notice it and then i started to notice it all the time whenever it happens it's like god that's annoying so uh i finally rebooted into just the default mainline uh, kernel that the um, KDE Neon distro, what I'm using, just ships with. And I waited. And everything worked fine. And I kept waiting and everything kept working fine. And as it turns out, it was the Zen mod kernel that mm. was installed because I got mm. rid of that and no issues ever thus far. So yeah, no, Zen mod kernel, not good. <sighs> Takes a big man, Pedro. Takes a big man. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Jill, have you done anything oh. recently? Oh, gosh, yeah. I did lots of podcasts, including uh, Linux Unplugged on J Jupiter Broadcasting yesterday, but also was on uh, Big Daddy Linux Live. You're a patient. Uh, you're a you're you're patient. patient. <laughs> you're a patient, yes. <laughs> it's like a little patient, <laughs> but with more euro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Lilliputians, so, but they're Europeans. <laughs> so, yeah, so Big Daddy Linux Live European Edition last Saturday. And um, uh, we had uh, Popey and Wimpy on as guests. And that was a lot of fun talking about the the latest Ubuntu Mate 2004 and how beautifully it's running. And it's running on my machine right now. And it's also really been fun having, um, I'm having a great time playing Serious Sam two on Jordan's stream on Thursdays. And so we just, we've been having such a great time with that. And if anyone wants to join in and play, come on in. <laughs> oh, the Sam that never made it to Linux is on Linux. Yeah, the but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's and it's cool, one of my man. favorites. <laughs> so, um, to my brothers and sisters out there, mm -hmm. um, if, if you know anybody that like works in the OBS development team, Mm -hmm. Like, see, maybe if they take a look at my bug report with this deck link quad, because <laughs> it's got issues only with OBS, not with the um, black magic software. I mean, it shouldn't. So I've been trying to figure out exactly what's causing some of the issues with that piece of hardware, because mm -hmm. nothing bugs you more than a bug. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's right there in the name. It, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, I should have read the cliff notes. Like, wait a minute. Yes, this is this is irritating me. And I, I want to make sure that, you know, it I'd be happier if it was reproducible across like um different software applications, right? It's not. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the thing that's what I've been doing probably for like a solid week and a half is trying to get this thing sorted out, figuring out because you what do you think then it was like, oh, is there some random hardware configure then your brain just spirals out of control. Oh, maybe it's because you have a USB C plugged into the video oh. card. That yes, clear that you just go down that nasty rabbit hole. So <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. Um also, I've seen a lot of people complaining, man, about the uh what what's the new AMD chip that's coming out? The new hotness, the AM3 mm -hmm. or AM2 uh, plus AM4. AM4. Four. <laughs> but it's uh the B550 motherboards and how they will not support um the original Ryzen's and the um Ryzen Plus. Uh -huh. So if you or even the um 3200 and the 3400G. Okay. 
because they're basically Ryzen uh, Plus. So, yeah. <laughs> Are you really upset about that? I mean, I have a B3 our audio box, this B350 with the original 1700. I Now, I know you kind of took the, like, when Zen, when Zen 2, two. Plus, yeah, <laughs> Zen came two. out. Mm. And yeah. you were thinking, eh, maybe it'll work. And it does, you know, the 3700X on the Asus Prime B350. Mm. It works. I mean, you're stuck at 3200 uh, megahertz RAM, but it works. <laughs> I think that's pretty decent, man. With the B350, you got Zen, Zen Plus, and Zen 2, right? Yep. So uh, maybe calm down. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's people like the new uh, AMD processors, Zen 3, as it's coming out. That will not be supported on either the 300 or the 400 series. Cry you know? me a river. <laughs> <laughs> Rivers, <laughs> cry them to me. As I stand here. What, what am I holding, Pedro? You're holding an X399 uh, TR4 Threadripper motherboard. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> that this supports first and second generation Threadripper. Only. <laughs> used just under $400. So, mm. yeah, all right? Yeah. You, you've got three generations out of... Just be happy. Yeah. It's an amazing motherboard. No, 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 aside from the point. But yeah. uh, feel free to send your hate mail. And um, all that beautiful stuff about that. So let's get into some linux stuff, starting with the uh, desktop Linux now has the highest yeah. market share. Ever? It does. Mm -hmm. And uh, as usual, uh, whenever these uh, bits of news uh, come out, although this one, I, just now I'm looking at the date, March 14th, 2019. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, according to the stats from Net Market Share, uh, you see that there's a bump uh, in Linux usage. And they say that in May 2017, it started with 199, and in June, it started with. Uh, to uh 36 in july it jumped a little bit to 253 and then of course uh in august linux market sort of kind of capped out at 3.37 percent market share so that's significant and they asked the questions like chromebooks do they help um linux market share and yeah from 2019 to now um I have no idea. No one's <laughs> <laughs> no one's actually said whether like a definite yes or no as to what uh, Chrome OS. But yeah, and there's always an upsurge around late summer, uh, August, uh, early September. There's always mm -hmm. a bit of a surge in uh, Linux market share. So that's not completely unheard of. And I'm sure if Chromebooks are being counted, they will play a major part on it <laughs> yeah well you know um unfortunately you know we can't accurately track desktop linux because of the nature of linux being able to share it <laughs> with usb flash drives and whatnot but since you know since people are home in quarantine they have more time on their hands to play with the desktop version of the operating system that they use at work and also uh, the people who were curious about Linux now have the time to play with it. So I'm sure that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a big bump because people are home and in quarantine and, and looking for something new to explore. Looking for any excuse possible to escape from Windows, no. Yeah, yeah. If you I don't blame them. If yes. you break down the number game, we're looking at a not 0.95% increase, almost 1%. Mm -hmm. This is very good considering, I mean, we, we have Dell, we have System76, and maybe a little, yeah. little Lenovo on the side uh, that you yep. can get pre-configured. Everybody else is going out there doing it, them, you know, doing it themselves, and that's, that's interesting news. That's interesting news. Yeah. And I think we're just going to see it grow more and more, especially yes. with yep. um, Apple going, yeah, we don't like making compute by another iDevice. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to make, you know, the traditional computers anymore. No more desktops, no more uh, laptops. I mean, they did price their desktop at like $50,000. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they clearly don't want to sell many of them. Don't worry, I'm saving up, man. I want to buy a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> just one. I, I can't get four. I, 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 just I, the I, one caster, yeah. Just, just one. Okay. Kind of <laughs> hey, Fair. no one will have any issues with anything we're about to talk about. 
Uh. Oh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. So, uh, Tom's Hardware, apparently it was a slow news day, and uh, Matt's L- uh, Axelson decided, you know what, let's just uh, throw some random scores at a bunch of uh, desktop operating systems for the Linux operating system. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, he decided to uh, sort of do a very... Oh, Tom's Hardware. Yeah, <laughs> that video. Yeah. It's annoying. Uh, and he decided to, you know, have a look, uh, have a look at a what is a fairly odd assortment of uh, DEs. Mm-hmm. He decided to have a look at KDE, GNOME, Cinnamon, Regolith, and um, Awesome. So now I can hear everyone shouting already. Uh, aren't those last <laughs> two? Isn't Regolith just? i3 and is it awesome also just a window manager it's like, mm-hmm. correct <laughs> <laughs> right you are <laughs> however um yeah no he does uh, go through the list and he um gives his opinion it's like okay this is nice here this is nice there this has got more extensions this has got uh, different things and apparently cinnamon wins according to uh matt's here now my question mm-hmm. is where's xfc Yes. <laughs> and uh, another question on top of that. Where is mate? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Oh, this, this, uh, this might be about as subjective as our cheer position on Saturdays. Where it is. Just kind of show our personal opinion. And, you know. Also, I, I, I was like, you know, I, I could sit back and maybe take some of this right into the point where I'm like, wait a minute, we're using eye candy as a metric? Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. But you know, maybe you could skip, <laughs> hear me out, you could skip a desktop manager like XFCE if you're just going to do the mainline ones, you know, none of, none of the cool hipster desktop managers just the popular ones okay. yeah you know what the kids are using these days but when, when you throw things in like awesome and regolith, uh, and regolith. Like, what yes. huh it's like those aren't even desktop environments hey, it's man. like yeah. linux desktop environment face-off <laughs> those are window managers yes. speed and stability two things i look for in a dm because you know it gets stuff done and i'm not here to watch nonsense sparkle i don't that no Joe. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I say app get install XFCE four window maker flex boss enlightenment. You know the the window manager or desktop environment of your choice. And actually, XFCE is one of the most popular desktops in, within the Linux community. So you know, it it, it needs to Subjective? be on that list. <laughs> <Yes>. Subjective <laughs> statement there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, um, yes, as Pedro was saying, awesome is an X window manager, not a DE. So he got confused on his uh, use of terminology there. <laughs> also, if you're playing games while using awesome, I would say totally take a screenshot and go show it to um, Iculus mm-hmm. on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's still an article. Read it for what it's worth. And but you know, I, I, I imagine anybody reads something like that for the just to see if the one they use is on there and what somebody thought about it. And... It's like regolith and yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey. Mm. <laughs> Listen, man. I I would love to be able to use Enlightenment, but it's got its own issues. That mm-hmm. it's got a lot of issues. That's the problem. <laughs> really nice compositor, though. Beautiful compositor, yes. Maybe it would run good on a Nook-sized um, Yeah, maybe it'll run good on the... They usually do, <laughs> because uh, as far as uh, Linux goes, it tends to work very well in the teeny tiny little th- almost thin client-sized boxes. But this isn't a thin client, this is a full-on computer. This oh. is the Purism Librem Mini. And it's a small form factor mini PC that puts freedom, privacy, and security first. So yes, it is a uh, glorified nook with all of the stuff that Librem usually does to their computers. Which is they do a uh, core boot and they try and remove as much of the proprietary black boxy software uh, or firmware that the intel platform comes loaded with mm. very good on them very good 
what isn't very good it's the price no come on ben? no 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 <laughs> I mean, we're talking about an i7, 8565U. That's whiskey thick. Uh, four mm. core, eight thread, 4.6 UHD <laughs> graphics, uh, 2400 megahertz uh, DDR4. What do we have in storage? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, one HDMI, you know, video port, uh, four USB 3, one, uh, networking. Going to be honest with you, first thing I saw I was like, man, that is exactly one Etherdoodle port away from me wanting it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it does have Bluetooth and it's Nook size, right? But to Pedro's point, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, $6 it's $6.99. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> and you know, hey, things like this, uh, small things come into premium, uh, but. You know, that's mm -hmm. what prevented me from getting Nooks for these Optiplexes down here. Because to get yeah, roughly price. that was going to cost like four times more. But I can get a lot of Nook for $700, mm -hmm. right? For $700, I actually went to PC Park Picker <laughs> and I added the um, AS Rock uh, Desk Mini A300, which is just a case with the power supply and the power brick and a motherboard. You have to supply your own RAM, processor, and uh, SSDs. And I managed to put two complete ones together using the same uh, basic <laughs> settings that this comes configured with, with uh, the 2400G, the same processor that I currently have on my uh, Steam box. And that was, that added up just a single one of those systems with um, 8 gigs of RAM, a 250 okay. gig yeah. SSD. Look at that. Have, have, check it. Have, did you see the price on the keyboard and mouse? No. Take a look at that right quick. I want to get your reaction. Uh, uh oh. Okay. <laughs> let me um, go down, scroll. Mm -hmm. It's live. Keyboard and my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. See, I was going to make a comment as to what kind <laughs> of uh, psychotropics these people were on when they decided that an, uh, the M.2 SATA 250 gig SSD was worth $60, which, you know, fair enough. <laughs> But the 2.5 inch regular, you know, one of these 250 gig um, mm -hmm. SSDs is $130. This mm -hmm. in 2015 cost me 40 euros. You know what? what That's kind? laughable. That's laughable because <laughs> you know what? I'm going to get a $100 keyboard uh, and mouse combo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Uh, no. <laughs> you know, for the hardware itself, you know, because you're going to be paying that little bit of a premium. You know, yeah. I, I could see if this was something that you were looking to pick up. You're like, hey, I want a Nook. I want to support these guys. I want the open core, um, open boot firmware and all that. I could eat that cost. But what's up with the keyboard and mouse? Seriously, is that <laughs> like a mechanical keyboard with... DSSDs. Why like, is the M.2 SATA yeah. SSD sixty dollars while the regular one is one hundred and thirty? <laughs> Apple logic. Yeah, I was gonna say you might as well just buy a um, Mac Mini, <laughs> which I have several of. Of you would need like two wheels. <laughs> yeah. How much is that? Yes. In, how, yes. How much? How much is that? You know, bottle caps. How much is that in casters? Wasn't it like uh, seven hundred? It's like seven hundred bucks for a set. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's one one set of wheels. That's Divide four wheels. Divide that by four. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is that it looks it looks to be more of a finished product than their uh, phone. <laughs> so that's, that's a plus. <laughs> oh, Jill, rub it in. It's gold, man. <laughs> Don't hit them when they're done. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I was actually amazed. The Librem did make over uh, over their pre order goal of fifty k. They're at like ninety something k now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that no, was I think actually, it's good. And yeah, the one thing good. you can send is they deliver product. <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, well, they do. And as long their as not computers. A phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their computers. It. Yeah, you're yeah. you're you're paying a premium for yeah, their, their trouble and... of yeah going do actually doing the work to get rid of all the proprietary crap so that's still way too much money no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well 
Well, it's already funded, so I'm um, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, they're no. making it, so good on them. <laughs> good on them. That's all I got to say, man. New version of Debian 10.4 is yeah. out. It changes everything. It's brand new. It's super <laughs> shiny. It's probably just a security update, and that's pretty much what it is, man. Uh, security updates galore. If everything goes right, and it should, it's Debian. I've updated uh, the box we're broadcasting from right now. You'll never know anything changed. And it didn't. And that's how I, how's I like it. And yeah, man, uh, just a bunch of little updates, you know, little SSH, just, just stuff that behind the scenes things. You're not going to notice, uh, Jill, you did say there was an update for the legacy driver yeah. or the NVIDIA. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, at least they're, uh, you know, Debian may be deprecating driver support for lots of the older GPUs, like the ATI Rage video card we talked about two weeks ago, but it will still maintain support for older NVIDIA cards via the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. So I was really happy to see that, that they had updated those for my older machines. And that's how uh, NVIDIA is doing, yeah. though. Yeah, it is. It is. But at least <laughs> Debian is including those now. <laughs> so <laughs> that is good. good. Yeah. Well, yeah. The legacy <laughs> stuff. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Legacy has always well, been a thing. That's, uh... Yeah. Yeah. But the NVIDIA drivers. Yeah. Legacy yeah NVIDIA the has been a 390. Thing. Yeah. yeah. The 390 mm, drivers that got updated yep. to support a bunch of the old cards, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. At, at that point, if you got something that's running on that, uh, I, I don't know if 3D accelerations for it. Try the new one. Uh, <laughs> the remember that mm. uh, five six CTI or those two five six CTIs that you had when I uh, joined Linux Gamecast. Yeah, yeah. You need those drivers to run it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd use Nuvo on my Quadros. <laughs> Works just fine. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Just not so good for, for gaming. And you can game on those old cards. <laughs> oh, you can. Yeah. Um, you know, you could eat soup with a uh, fork as well. It's just, I don't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I very can still effective. play Portal, no. Portal with 290X. <laughs> Wraith Master. One thing, one thing people love is blinky yes. RGB nonsense. <laughs> and if you have the Wraith Cooler, that shipped with your AMD Ryzen CPU, there's now, well, there's been a command line utility of sorts that you could use in the past, but this gives you a nice little GUI that you can adjust brightness, speed, mode, color, all the fun. Look at it. Look at the horror. It's so oh, pretty. no, it's nightmare <laughs> fuel incarnate. You don't want to touch it. Um, but yeah, if you want to put that uh, nonsense on your cooler to make it blink, you now can. And I thought it was kind of an interesting story. Uh, you know, just my luck. I tried this thing for several hours, couldn't get it to work, but you know, I never took my cooler out of the box. So that's probably why. <laughs> that probably um, explains yeah. that. <laughs> the dude had to use Windows 10 and a VM with Wireshark and like a little bit of a USB pass through to get the needed data bits for this. It's a good little story that he uh, mm -hmm. put together with his journey. Then he just had to figure out like a, uh, way to decrypt the uh like bootleg decimal format that this was in yep but once he got that sorted <laughs> nice. he was like bling bling rgb it's great <laughs> no well this is yeah no this is awesome because linux has become an art and rgb bling bling big boy now in the modding space and you know we can change the rgb colors on keyboards and mice and now fans this is wonderful and actually will help adoption of gamers to linux so, you know, the, those, those people coming over from Windows want all the bling bling when they're playing their games. So now they'll get it on Linux. <laughs> you know, if uh, the bling bling is the only thing stopping you from dropping Windows and coming yeah. over to Linux, do There's us all a favor problems. and don't. No. Just don't. <laughs> Listen, man, you're not a real gamer. <laughs> Poser. <laughs> Uh, no, you know, it's cool. It is very cool. Uh, I have um, Wraith Prism as well. It came with the 3700X, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's actually on the 1600 in oh. Nori's PC <laughs> because Nori's PC is the only one with a side window. Well, unless you cut the Steam box. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a little Windows are grill. a thing of life now. It's not even a luxury item. Like, well, I wouldn't come to the window too. Okay, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah, you have to go out of your way to find a case without a window. You do, don't you? 
Uh, yeah. That's actually, it's a very, very good cooler. I used that until I moved um, 1700 over to the audio duties. The, and Pedro and I both ended up with like these bizarro side brackets for the Hyper 212s. Mm. And yep. I put it in the wrong direction. <laughs> but in the new case, it's got vent holes in the top. I was like, that's fun. Do that. Cool. Mm -hmm. But now you can make it blink. Uh, I have no RGBs in my Noctua cooler. So. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> should, should I just paint it like fluorescent body paint and light it off or something? I painted my Noctua fan, the one that's on the CPU in the Steam box, black. Mm -hmm. You're a monster. <laughs> so I did a social faux pas uh... there. Oh, man. Did oh. you make it mon <laughs> matte black or glossy? <laughs> the outside was uh, matte black, and the fan itself, the fan blades, were glossy. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I needed to do something to pass the time while I was waiting for the stuff to arrive, so it's like, yeah. oh, can of spray paint. <laughs> oh, uh, beige and brown fan. <laughs> well, I know how to keep you occupied. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easily amused is what I'm saying. Yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, on to Blinky, more Blinky stuff. Yay, so cool. This is Terminal Media Viewer. Yes, it's another uh, video player for the terminal. And so you can view images and videos without leaving the console. And it uses FFmpeg to play videos and YouTube slash DL to play YouTube videos. And as they said in, in the show notes, not all terminals support true color output. So make sure to check the list in the show notes. Otherwise, you will get uh, 256 color, that 16 is color, ANSI, chunkus. or ASCII yes. playback. <laughs> and yes, it, it is pretty pixely, um, but it, it's still very, very cool. But that's and why I, hipsters want to use it. It's yeah. pixely. Well, it's retro. I, <laughs> it's got YouTube support. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I ran the binary in cool retro term to get true color output, and it was off. You have to, it was, uh, it, it was off. It was, um, uh, by default, cool retro term loads with a, a color theme. So it was running in that color th theme, and, and it ran in bright orange. I was about to say, how, then... <laughs> how could you even tell through all the nonsense that's loaded in cool retro term? Yeah, so <laughs> cool retro term, you just had to turn all the settings off, and then you'll get uh, the 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 classic true color video and you know i like i like these kind of things because well i remember in the 90s getting videos to play in council when booting debian and cli and using M Player to play videos with the aa live and caa live that was cool elite hacks or stuff yeah i, I remember installing <laughs> x in the 90s and using a video player to play it yeah <laughs> well i actually <laughs> boy my quest was to get um at, at, you know, um, high high color in the terminal, and I was. Um, so There's a difference between was, me and Jill. I wanted to watch the yeah, video. Yeah. Jill wanted something to play with. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember installing the frame buffer so I could get higher quality video playback just in CLI. And uh, but it's it's really nice to you know have another option out there. And I know my my brother in chat would agree. He loved doing this as well. <laughs> Nah, man. Uh, it's all very cool, uh, but very much like cool retro term. I, I saw this and I was like, yeah, that's, that's one of those programs that for me, I play with once and I'll go, oh, it's neat. All right. Uh, it, it's just not. <laughs> that's neat. It yeah. works. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Cool story, bro. I, it, it doesn't have any yeah. long term usability for me. And I'm, you know how hyper inefficient I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, all things considered, it's a very good implementation of like uh, libav and ffmpeg to uh, mm -hmm. re-encode and convert the pixel by pixel output of the video into UTF-8 compliant color blocks, which mm -hmm. is why the the uh, big chungus rabbit, or however the uh, <laughs> video was called, uh, that I used to test to see if I could play um, 4K video on really really old laptops um but yeah that's why it looks so blocky because it, it's literally a character block yeah. a utf8 character <laughs> block that's the pixel <laughs> i think it's pretty neat man and yeah I, with the youtube stuff you could definitely set it up to do uh the 12 hour um gandalf with epic oh, can it do sound 
Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it could definitely run Lord of the Rings <laughs> in Terminal. <laughs> so. I know you could do sound, but I think it just this won't mm -hmm. do it. I didn't see any switches for sound. <laughs> this is just for, for the one. video? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So you won't have yeah. the epic sax playing in the background as Gandalf nods yeah. for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> <Quite unfortunate. laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I wonder if we can get SRT support so we can... Yeah. That'd be brilliant. What's going on? Yay. So this is... Ah, uh, so the homebrew search for UFOs just went open source. Yay! This is Skyhub, which is a worldwide public search for unidentified flying objects using a global network of machine learning, smart cameras, and sensor arrays built by you with our open source software. And, you know, this is really, really hot. Um, really good. I think it will help SETI a lot, actually. So... You know, the Skyhub system contains three components, uh, the tracker um, with and the sensor array and the cloud and is powered by an NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Let's go ahead and get and... the conspiracy started. It, <laughs> yeah. you, do, do you see that right now? Yeah. Anybody ever watch Watchmen? Read Watchmen. Does that, oh. does that look a bit familiar? <laughs> oh, is where they fake the moon landing? I mean, Mars landing? No. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I'm just saying, like a certain doctor might have something like that stamped on their forehead. Oh, oh right. the, there he goes. Yes. It took him a second. It's uh, the dot is in the middle, though. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to start a conspiracy, but go on. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, actually, uh, I forgot my prop because I have a Sky Hub. It is a router that Sky yes. gives their uh, DSL clients. <laughs> Dude, so it's clearly are they aware no, that it, it's a street lamp, Pedro. <laughs> Possibly small gas. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a teeny tiny little black box, but uh, plenty of black boxes around me, but not that particular one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aw, but this is still really, really, really cool to have a... a homebrew uh, version of this you know and seriously i think it, it really could help seti um in you know cataloging all the data of ufos that are seen in the sky whether they're terrestrial or not you know that mm -hmm. quote that's uh it displays very prominently at the start of um xcom i think it was attributed to mark twain i may be off on that one but it's um there are only two possibilities we are alone in the universe, or we are not, mm -hmm. and they are both yeah. equally as scary. Yeah, very true. I'll wait and see. Yeah. I don't want to go look. <laughs> I'll wait and see. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I don't know. It's just like, I, I don't think any life form capable of getting here would be detectable by anything we would aim at it. And even if they were, they probably went, oh, you're still there. Okay, yeah. we'll be back in a few million years. Did, Goodbye. Didn't meet, we didn't meet their prime directive. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't advanced enough. Beautiful people, if you want to help us meet our prime directive, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, that's how we finance this nightmare train each and every week and bringing you four or five days of content live. We got a couple of levels. We got chairlings, death notes, sea monsters. What else? Ah, uh, do I got to see all six? Yeah. Yes. Executive <laughs> producers. Chicago we got one just for yes. Chicago. <laughs> and advisor yeah. levels, man. That's the nuts thing. We do appreciate each and every one of you. Get your name in the credits and all that. You get an extra hour of content from us as thanks or punishment, however you want to look at it. We don't judge. <laughs> And uh, you, really. yeah, you get to hop in the Discord. <laughs> We're hanging out there. IRC is always open, completely free. Uh, that's what we use during the live stream. But we also have a live audio only version um, for people in Discord. That's not your gem. We got merch. We got the Elks. We got the Faces. We got the Linux Weekly, Daily, Wednesdays. We got Frank, mm -hmm. who needs to come back. Self isolating Puck. I know you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Use Me Penguins. All yes. the fun stuff. Sticky chairs everywheres and we got a list uh for the see that i was thinking about it. it's not gonna happen 
stuff for the studio. And uh, there's also, more importantly, a uh, wish list uh, for Pedro, mm -hmm. Jordan, and Jill. And I think both of you got some stuff that you need to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we sure did. Yes. <laughs> so, Go on, Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is really cool. Pedro got me this cute plushy penguin oh, that's bigger for my than list. I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's much bigger than I thought too. <laughs> but it's this very beautiful pink plushy penguin for my birthday, which was last Friday, and I love it very so very much, Pedro. Thank you so very much. And he Hope wrote you had me a, a note. happy cake day. That came that came a bit too late. <laughs> oh, but still, that was Amazon's fault, not yours. <laughs> so yeah, on the note, you said, happy cake day. <laughs> so I have to read yes. it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the, the other thing that everyone did for my birthday, um, Strider, Mir PPC, Arthur, and Linux Gineru gifted me and spoiled me with a lot of Steam games. Thank you so much. That was so, it was it was so wonderful, you know, was a wonderful birthday, despite the quarantine. What you missed, what you missed was in Discord. Because <laughs> I, I, I remember months and months ago, I had a, had a chat with the chill. I'm like, yo, yo, you, you need to send that wish list. Because I was getting ready to get Jill yeah. something on her wish list. And I'm like, man, you you just wish listed everything, period. Yeah. There, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I, I don't know what to get you. And I'm just going to get you something random. However, kudos to Strider and Nobody Oaks, those brave soldiers that just pick something. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Amazon kind of made that choice for me. It's like, oh, you're in the UK, are you? Well, you can only buy this one. It's like, all right, Jill's getting another penguin plushie. Hey, man. <laughs> Is that right side up or upside down? Yeah, it's, it's, it's swimming. It's swim I keep swimming. I keep swimming. Penguin's eyes are on the bottom. <laughs> Oh, what? sorry. I had an upside down. Okay. There it is. <laughs> no, it's swimming. <laughs> Honestly, I think it works both ways. Yes. Like a cotton tip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because penguins do swim upside down as well. All right. Oh, hang on. We still got Pedro. Yes, go back. Yes. Just a quick one from Haplo, uh, one of our uh, two advisors. Thank you very much. Um, fans are incredibly necessary. Please enjoy this for reasons. And this is a USB fan. It's actually the one <laughs> that I added to my wish list last Thursday because it got a bit warm. Mm -hmm. And I remembered it's like, oh, yeah, I need a desk fan. Something that's not terribly loud, but, you know, cools me down. And it's like, oh, this one's got good reviews. So I put it on my wish list. It's like when the heat does decide to stay, I'll get it. Well, uh, the Haplo got ahead mm -hmm. of the game there. Thank you. Yay, <laughs> so what's Haplo, it like ringing up you. your mum and going, oh, yeah, it's, it's going to like get up to 20 today. It's it, it's hot. <laughs> and just can, can you feel her like vibrating with laughter? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's usually my mom who calls and says, do you know how hot it got here today? It's like, no. 34 is like, all right, okay. Uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Yay. Uh, that's really cool stuff. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> this is, I don't know, man, this is kind of like the old Eldrick pie looking duck yeah. thing, man. I don't, I don't know if I'd eat that. But there's a new mm -hmm. version of Ubuntu. Yeah. So a lot of people in the Linux community will be happy about this. Ubuntu 2004 LTS is now certified for the Raspberry Pi. Yay. And this means that it will just work out of the box on the Raspberry Pi, be easily flashed, have frequent updates, and have Canonical's 10-year support. And, and that's a really, really big deal. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have another solid operating system for the Raspberry Pi. And this also includes the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B and up, and as well as the Compute Module 3. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. And I've mm -hmm. um, actually tested it. Ubuntu server runs beautifully on the Raspberry Pis. I'm not sure if I'd run the, run the regular desktop with the full GNOME. <laughs> I'd probably go to a different window manager. But um, but it does run on the, on the GNOME, does run on these Pis. So, but the server is really great because, you know, many people prefer it over the stock Raspbian for web server, cloud, and Docker projects. So this is really sweet. 
I don't know, man. I, about it. <laughs> I might get in the way of my Windows 10. Can you? Is that still <laughs> thing? <laughs> yes, no. that, uh, if you download, what is it, noobs? Yeah. You can set it up uh, to install Windows 10. I just, uh. I remember it's seeing the announcement <laughs> for Windows 10 on Pi, and my first a genuine heartfelt reaction was, is yeah. it already April? <laughs> Even the fo- full known desktop is still a lot lighter than running Windows on Man. the Pi. I mean, you could maybe get away with the GNOME version if you have a 3B plus or a 4 with at least 2 gigs of RAM and yeah. you enable the GLX uh, yes. rendering on mm-hmm. the Pi, mm-hmm. yeah, you might be able to get Possibly. away with GNOME yeah. 3 on that. <laughs> yes, definitely. Right. How, mm-hmm. how could they go about telling us um, about their Pi purchases and playful... <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm out of peace. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're out of peas, uh good. That uh, that stuff makes me uh, break out into hives. But uh, hey, if you did uh, do a bit of a project with some peas that somehow involved Linux, by all means, send us some pictures of it. Go to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button. There's a, a little forum that you mm-hmm. need to fill. Just, you know, uh, be very, very careful. Because <laughs> if you don't pick LWDW in the little show box... It might turn into some hate mail for that uh, foul mouth at Saturday show, What We Do. That's definitely a thing, man. Um, <laughs> share the love, all that fun stuff. We love to get your feedback. We've got to run on that and wait for it. And uh, mm-hmm. this one, this one yeah, came in this is through cool. like um, the, the main line. You can always send us a message on Patreon. Um, if you're helping us out, we're like, yo, all right, we'll, we'll get back to you. And I especially like this one because uh, it's talking <laughs> some smack. Yeah. A little bit of smack. <laughs> oh, maybe a little lot of smack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so after listening to the latest LWW, I realized that no matter what DE Pedro is using, it has problems and freezes, and, and he ends up talking smack about it. My analysis is that Pedro can't use a computer, and he's the problem. <laughs> Smiley face. From now on, all of Pedro's opinions about DEs should be ignored. Keep up the great work. <laughs> that was funny I mean, to mentor. Pedro, if you were paying attention Pedro. to my <laughs> opinions, that's your problem. Yeah, and it was timely for today's topic. <laughs> Everyone can join me just asking you one thing, Pedro. Leave Denmark okay. alone. Are you trying to take Scott's and Jordan's place as the bad pun person? <laughs> no, I'm trying to prevent you from attacking innocent countries, Pedro. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I don't usually talk about XFC. I don't even usually I mean, talk about mate. You, you wouldn't talk I, about XFC. It just works. It's boring. Like, ah, this is stupid. I don't like that's this. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, mate is a very good um, desktop yeah. environment. Yes. Uh, really, the only issues I ever had with it uh, specifically were compositor related because mm-hmm. the default compositor wasn't very good. But hey, guess what? Compton fixes that. You yes. know what else Compton fixes? XFC's co- uh, compositing problem. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro likes KDE, so uh, I do. There's, there's I like yeah, Plasma's pretty. It, I, in specific, I like uh, KWin's advanced window rules. You can literally set each and every single window specifically to a specific area, to a specific screen, at a specific coordinate. Mm-hmm. It's like. <sighs> and somehow that justifies like crashes. <laughs> To be fair, the only thing that crashes is the compositor. <laughs> oh, well, pass out. Hey, <laughs> XFC 414. Okay? What about it? I don't run a compositor anymore. I can't see you from the top of this tower, Pedro. Say that again. I keep KWIN compositing disabled, and I use Compton. Use Compton. Mm-hmm. Everything tries to be yeah. Compton. Just use Com- Compton or Pycom. <laughs> Actually, just go back to using Compton. It's less resource intensive <laughs> and it runs faster. Um, 
Oh, I tried I like pie cotton. Too. I did. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We got to roll out of mm-hmm. here. We will see you next week. Reek? Yes. Yeah. Next week. Next week. No, Reek. Oh, poor Theon Greyjoy. Reek. Reek. <laughs> Let's roll some credits. <laughs> Hey, I waited to the credits. <laughs> Good on it. Was it me or Jill? <laughs> uh, hey, Jill won that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay, Jill. Go on, uh, yeah. you can say it. You started, <laughs> might as well. Aww. <laughs> thank you, Haplo, our wonderful advisor. And and thank you for the, sta- thank you. The, the fan you said. But Daniel, we got Chris, hey, Admiral JT, Linux New, and now yeah. System T, Nick, Ryan, Kazu, the Sildad, Ranger, Gnaru, Freedom P, and Girl. Cymetix <laughs> Vanheim Oxford Comma Dosky Colsta Greg Mr. Amish 222 two, two. Don't step on blue <laughs> And Fox Dog Near PPC <laughs> I mean we can cheat we can just read Strider. off the, <laughs> the Discord user uh, list there <laughs> Creator Matthew <laughs> That penguin's still upside down yeah <laughs> no, it's right side up this time. Uh, I, I... Yes, the eyes are on the bottom of that one, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See its little feet. <laughs> uh... <laughs> the, the beaks above the eyes. <laughs>